Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from azureautomation.com and welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium with Java. And we have been talking about test ng in our last lecture and we are going to see how we can work with test ng uh, testing framework even further while using in automation testing tools like Selenium in our case. Uh, but again, we can use the same exact logic uh, if you are working with Playwright for some instance. Uh, for example, uh, if in future tomorrow I'm going to have another course with Playwright uh, with Java, then I'm going to just refer the exact same uh, same series uh, and same lectures for the uh, for the Playwright as well because it's exactly the same. I mean, TestNG library is going to remain the same for that. So it's going to be exactly the same for that as well. Well, as I said, uh, I'm gonna uh, we are gonna discuss how we are going to further enhance our test that we have got using the POJO class file into a um, uh, into a test ng uh, class. So for doing that, if you remember, we were doing this uh, operation over here to perform a login operation. Uh, and then we were performing an employee create operation and a log off operation. So we were doing quite a lot of different thing on this single method. So we are now gonna dissect these into uh, multiple different methods for our testing operation. So let's see how we can actually achieve that. So in order for doing that, I'm gonna go over here uh, in the test ng test class file. And uh, if you see here, this web driver, uh, Chrome driver, and the navigate operation is required only first time while the application opens, right? So this is like a very, very, uh, uh, very initial uh, setup operation that we have to do for our application. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to write it on the uh, on the before before test annotation over here i'm just gonna copy paste that uh, so the moment i copy paste it the ide automatically knows that i am working with the selenium web driver and also the chrome driver so all the references for the package are being added here which is great uh, and you'll also notice that this time the web driver i need to access not only in this method from outside of this particular um, method which means i need to create a variable which i can use it so i'm going to say a private web driver uh, as the uh, driver something like this and now i can use this driver here so you see that now i can access this driver from any other method even for the test login operation uh, so that is cool now we need to perform a login operation. So how do I perform a login operation? So I need to perform this um, this home page click operation. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to paste these codes over here. So this is going to be performing a login operation for me, right? Uh, and see, once I click the login button, it is gonna return me a login page right? That is going to be the login page creation for me. So I need to store this login page somewhere outside of this particular method. If I don't do it, then I won't have access to this login page variable from outside. So what I really mean about that is, so if I just going to copy these entire things, and so this is the create employee, so test create employee. So if I paste this code, you see that I will be missing this home page as well as the login page. <clears throat> so I need to somehow uh, somehow do this uh, page to be created, not just in this test method, but also from the outside. So how do I actually do it? Well, the way I can do it is I can create a private home page of uh, the home page and similarly private uh, login page of the login page. So I can create two variables like that. And I can use these pages, uh, the variables over here and also over here. So see that? Now I can access these from the other test methods as well. So this is like you are essentially creating multiple different test methods very specific to those operations, like login operations separately, 
uh, and the uh, employee creation operation separately uh, and then if you're going to perform a log off operation then you can do that as well over here so I'm gonna just get rid of that um, and you remember we have got the uh, login page I think in the login page or on the home page I don't know where is the login page really uh, log off page really exist uh, guess what we have just called it directly in here so the driver dot find element by so basically this this log off link exists in the home page as well so we can go to the home page and probably add a locator like log off uh, log off and then the url for that log off operation is going to be link text which is log off so i can just go create a log off and then we can click the log off operation right so i'm gonna say public uh void because we don't really have to return anything once the log off operation is done so it's like done forever so uh click log off operation which is going to be essentially uh, lnk log off dot click that's all um, and we can just call this up here which is going to be home page dot click log off so that should do the log off operation and we don't really need this uh, test setting we don't really even have that and guess what we can also close the browser driver once the the driver execution is completed you remember we have something called as driver.quit method we can also call that after every test execution is completed so i can just say um, we can also add log here quitting the web driver something like that and i can say just driver dot quit so that should close the entire browser uh, driver for us so you now see that using this test ng uh, testing framework we have essentially modified quite a lot of different things so we have separate before test method which is just going to do a ceremonies kind of operation like launching the browser creating the browser driver uh, and also navigating to the page there's all ceremonial things happens in here it's nothing to do with the test itself and similarly the login operation the test login method is just dealing with the login operation so if you're going to be running a login test like this test it's just going to run the login test for you but if you're going to be doing a, a create employee operation then you need to perform the login uh, and then create an employee operation and that's when the next question will naturally come is Karthik, then I have not even performed the login operation here. So how should I actually perform the login before I start creating an employee? Well, you asked the right question because at the moment we have this login operation as a separate method. But how do I actually call uh, the create employee operation while the log off the, the application is a log off state? We'll get there. Uh, I got your concern. But let's try to run this entire test and see if the test execution happens as we are expecting. So we are running the test right now. So we should see the browser open up and it's navigating to the application. And you see that the test execution has actually failed. And we get an exception here. It says that this login page is null. Do you know why this is even happening for us like the login page is null because we already have a login page but still this is throwing us an error why is that really happening guess why this is really happening see you are expecting the test login to happen for you as the first test method in this particular class file right but apparently that's not the case because while you see the test execution which is happening at the moment uh over here um sorry on the execution side you see that the first method which was executed was a test create employee it was not the login operation it was the create employee uh, method because you see that the c test c c is the like the first letter of the alphabet and l is the next letter of the alphabet and after c definitely that's why the create employee is taken as the priority 
and the login operation is taken as the second priority of this method. So you can't ensure that this particular test will always run on the same order that you're looking for. And that's why this has really happened to you. So now you may ask like, Karthi, so how do I actually run this in a specific order? Well, if you just go to the documentation um, of the uh, testng.xml file, so if I just go here, you see that uh, at the moment, if I just search for something like order, you will notice that it tells you that in that case, okay, testng cannot guarantee that the before methods are executed in inheritance order, uh, blah, blah, blah. So this is not what we're looking for. But if I just go next, it says that by default, testng will run your test in the order they are found in the XML file. So we don't really have an XML file at the moment. So we don't even use an testng.xml file. But what if we have used a testng.xml file? you have an option to include the name of the method that you wanted to run in an order. So you can just specify that as well. We have not went to the place where we can discuss about the testng.xml file, which we'll be discussing in our next lecture, apparently. But at least for now, you can think of this order is something that you can achieve using testng.xml file, uh, but not using the normal way of writing this. I mean, normal way of running it using the IntelliJ IDE. So how to get around this particular problem, at least right now? Well, I always say to students, like, just put in, um, put like something which which makes it more uh, readable, like underscore one. Uh, and then this is going to be the one which is going to be running in underscore two. Um, and this is like underscore three, something like that. So that uh, it tries to run in, in a specific order, uh, like based on what you have specified. So let's see if that really happens. Uh, no. So it always looks for the first one. So you can just say test A login, test B create employee, um, and test C log off. I know this is not quite right, but I'm just going to leave it for now. But once we get to the testng.xml file, you will notice that this is going to be very, very straightforward. You, you don't really have to do it uh, this fashion. But at least now we are getting a different error. Uh, it says that uh, no such element ex, uh, exists for the login because the reason why this has happened is because the browser has not even opened uh, for this particular page because it has even not navigated to this particular page uh, that we are looking for, which is this one, right? So it has not even navigated to this particular page and then it couldn't be able to click the uh, page there. So let's see what's really going on at the moment. So if I just see eaapp.sami.com website, um, just this one, and you can see that our application is throwing an exception. So I guess that's the reason why this is happening. So I have just fixed this uh, behind the scene while uh, I was just freezing the screen a bit magically. So you should see that the application should be loaded at least right now. There we go. The application is now loaded. So I think now that that should be fine. I mean, our, our testing is just doing correctly. It's not really doing any false negative or anything like that, which is great. So now let's try to run the entire test and let's see if the application loads up. You can see that the application loads up. Uh, so the login uh, is coming up there and we got a failure here, uh, which is, oh, why is it? Oh, look at that. This is saying after method. That's the problem. I think I should just put like an after test there. So I don't want to quit the browser uh, after every single method. That's the problem that we, had, we just uh, encountered. So yeah, the after method is working fine as well. So let's do the last try probably. You can see that the login has done, the creating of the employee is done, logging off is done, and then we are successfully completed the entire operation. <clears throat> so this, this proves the point that using the testng.xml file, so this proves the point that we could able to use the testng, uh, testng to perform the operation that we are looking for in a much, much easier fashion. So this is, this is already awesome. Uh, the next operation which, which I wanted to show you is that uh, the next problem that I wanted to show you is that every single test method that you have at the moment over here should never be written in an dependency fashion. So at the moment over here, you can see that these two test methods is 
dependent on even this method is dependent on each other so it should never be the case in the uh, in the testing world so you should not have any dependency or run them in a specific order or anything like that never ever do that i got this question from student asking kartik why or how do i run this in a specific order or how do i make this transaction to work something like that i know in like a enterprise grade application you might have like multiple different uh, different operation but you should never be making like a multiple different methods and then make it dependent i mean apparently it's exactly the same thing that you're trying to do right you're going to perform you're trying to achieve a bigger operation by writing it like a separate small methods rather than writing like a separate test methods like these you can actually uh, you can actually try to write them all in a single method that is way too better operation so what i essentially say is that don't write like this this is not correct way of doing it so what you can do it is you can just say okay you are going to perform a login operation just going to be happening every single time where you you run the test right so in that case try to move this code away from here to here so you are going to perform a, a login operation regardless of your employee creation so you don't really have to have this on the separate method so that is the first thing that you have to do and similarly if you're going to perform a log of operation every single time after the entry uh after the performing of the operation then you can you can just say get rid of it and do a log of here so this way you can only see that even if you have multiple different functionality after the login operation you can put it over here on the on the business logic method so this is more like a ceremonial method uh, like what you have uh, and then this one is the test method that you're trying to do so you can write it some way something like this or in worst case scenario uh, or maybe in the best case scenario it depends on how you call it you can just put them all in a single method like this so this is also very very legal instead of you writing it like a multiple different method which make you more dependent for every test method write them all in a single method and while you do that you don't necessarily have to create like a separate uh, separate variables outside you don't really ha even have to declare these things over here you can just declare them all in a single method and then try to work it out from there so that way it is even more better for you instead of you doing it in this fashion so hope that makes sense so this is how you can actually work with uh, within your uh, test Uh, called while using the test ng uh, testing framework and now the next question comes is kadik um this is great i mean we are trying to run the entire test using the uh, test ng from the uh, from the ide but how do i run these tests from an command line interface or from an ci cd pipeline if i'm going to be using it in future So CI/CD pipeline is something we have never discussed so far. We'll be discussing about that in the future of this particular series. But what you have to have a way that you can run it. You remember in the Java test we used to do a Java C and then we just specify the class name. It runs the entire thing. But in here for the testing, uh, using the test ng dot uh, using the test ng test framework, how do we actually try to run them all? and that's when we need to understand what is called as a test ng.xml file we are going to be dealing with test ng.xml file we're going to be talking exclusively about test ng.xml file in our next lecture we're talking about how you can use the test ng.xml file to create all your test and run them all configured from the test ng.xml file in a way much better fashion that is what we'll be discussing in next lecture so stay tuned catch you in the next one